Anomaly. Something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or expected. An oddity, peculiarity, irregularity, inconsistency, incongruity, a rarity. Hello and welcome to the Anomaly Podcast. I'm Jen, and I put as much energy into my muggle fashion as I do into my Star Wars cosplay. And I am an anomaly. My name is Angela, and I piloted through the virtual asteroid field with Sith Jen to get to Comic-Con during Rainpocalypse 2015, and I am an anomaly. Welcome to the podcast, people! Welcome, everyone! This is our Wizard World Comic-Con Austin 2015 vidcast. So if you are listening through Stitcher Smart Radio, you're only going to hear audio. You're going to miss out on all the video clips and pictures that we're showing in this cool little episode that we do once a year. We will still try to be riveting. We will. But you can totally go to our website and check out that stuff in HD too, because we're going to put it up on YouTube and we can stream it in HD. So don't miss out. (laughs) <laughs> if you just discovered our show, please subscribe to Anomaly and check out the hundreds of other episodes we've released since 2007. We cover everything from sci-fi, fantasy, television shows and movies to books, games and conventions like this one. Mm-hmm. Again, talking about Wizard World Comic Con Austin. That's right. During oh, Rainpocalypse. During Rainpocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it rains in Texas, it's always some sort of sky is falling kind of adventure. This is not a joke. We live in the flash flood capital of the world. Anything can happen here in a very quick amount of time because we have lots of rivers around this area. And between here and Austin, and between you and Austin as well, there are quite a few rivers <laughs> that go across Tributaries. all of our paths. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were rising quite quickly. And in that morning, we had tornado sightings and yep. all kinds of stuff. And it kind of looked like it was was moving out so we went ahead and started on our way and it was moving like basically up the highway and while Jen and uh, Sith Jen and I were driving the super rain like stopped like right on top of us <laughs> we didn't even get there until right before noon and uh, luckily Noah was there coincidence I think not nope. no um, uh, Noah was there to kind of man the booth <laughs> while we were uh, in route we did like a quote-unquote mini first day thing. Did you watch that one? Yes, where it's good. just me and Jen and, and Noah. I did that on purpose to show like how pitiful the booth looked. <laughs> how we all looked coming in in the rain, like no makeup. Our hair was all gross. It was pretty hilarious. Anyway, so it was not bad once we got there. And being on the high, you know, knowing what we know about how everything works, being on the highway is actually one of the safest places to be. And we just got there and then it was fine. But my hair was a mess. So how was your trip in? Oh, it was crazy. It took place October 30th through 31st, but we were traveling in on the 30th. Halloween weekend. Halloween weekend. I could hardly get out of my town. At every point, there was a little water crossing with emergency vehicles pulling idiots out who decided to try it. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Sorry if you're listening and you're one of those people who tried to No, go I think us, they deserve to be shamed. Anytime you're in that situation, I think anyone could maybe make that stupid mistake because you look and you're like, this you know, maybe so you're deep. in a big vehicle. Some of the ones that I saw were big trucks. Mm-hmm. My brother has a big truck and he'd probably think he could make it. He didn't get stuck in it because he was smart enough to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't do anything last weekend. But uh, I saw guys that probably thought they could make it and they're like, oh, I've got a great idea. And they were just in the mud spinning their yep. wheels. I am sad that we didn't get to hook up, but I'm glad that you stayed safe. And yeah, we were going to caravan together, but it was probably safer for me to come by myself. So yeah, we had a, a booth this year again yeah, at Wizard yeah. World. And this time it was a it was a bigger booth. It was um, a corner booth. Corner. And it was a pretty good placement, I think. I would have preferred the first booth placement they gave us, but now I'm just splitting hairs, you know. And we love Wizard World, and I have actually seen recently, because um, I get the, do you get the newsletter? Mm-hmm. 
They have made a commitment to start investing. They've invested a lot of money in getting better celebrities. I think every celebrity that does these things is amazing. Awesome. No, much, no matter who they are, how much money they're getting and or what fandom they're part of. It, it takes a lot to do this. And I think it's probably one of the hardest things to have to do is to deal with fans, especially because a lot of times actors really don't like being themselves in front mm -hmm. of people. I mean, so I, I give credit to every single celebrity that came out, but there are certain celebrities that are bigger draws than others. I get the map to choose the booth space or whatever. It was was twice as big as it ended up being because of cancellations and moves and Ultra Sabres wasn't able to come but it wasn't because of the celebrities or whatever it was it's because they ran out of stock yeah that too yeah. they probably also had some trouble driving in from their area well but Texas, they had so. they had they had canceled before mm -hmm. that because oh, okay. there there was somebody told me that they had tweeted that they were out yeah. of stock and so like come you know it would have been ridiculous for them to come in we could have probably made a killing off of our <laughs> I know everybody kept coming to our table asking us if we were selling our lights yeah we had to like, be really careful because people were just like picking them Pick, up and like they were there for a show and yeah we like, you put it down on the table for a minute and somebody's picking it up looking at it and yeah I kept moving everybody's lights because we had like 20 about 26 people with us everyone on Sunday or Saturday not Sunday dressed up in Star Wars cosplay and most of them all had at least one ultra saber lightsaber yeah and so people were laying them on our table or whatever I kept picking them up and putting them against the inside of the booth and then I even had to move them away from the corner because the curtain was pulled back a little yeah, and if anyone it, wanted it, to they could have yeah them. so but everyone's pretty cool at the con they, and they just but they were respectful but they didn't still, always know well the if we part, were a um, a vendor or if we were you know a, well yeah a and that was the assumption is a lot of yeah. people really did think that we were selling we had them even though it was kind of obvious that we didn't but you know people don't, you know you're in vacation mode you don't think about that kind of stuff they're mm -hmm. just like oh look how cool the other thing about the lightsabers which is hilarious is that they marked all the lightsabers at the weapon booth i'm sorry they That's did an awesome job this year i want to say that first we always are kind of critical of some of the no, things they, they've done they but they did better a good and job better. and there was a lot of people even though we had flood apocalypse we did but yeah they they tagged our lightsabers but they let someone with a a real bow <laughs> come through without tagging her that wasn't strong but it was a weapon yeah, a real I, one like there's no real lightsabers like they don't no. really exist <laughs> like they don't I mean I hate to tell you this but uh lightsabers they're not real I would love for them to be you know Absolutely. and I did see an article where Neil deGrasse Tyson was talking about how you could theoretically have one mm -hmm. and that's great but when it comes to you know the law no such thing as lightsabers and it just makes it annoying to hold that's the other thing is that I hide it with your hand if you can figure it well and not just that but like the, the zip tie that they use to put it on it actually fell off of mine at one point oh well that's good <laughs> but the zip tie was like it hurt like if yeah. you tried to grasp it in a certain way it was like digging into your skin so it's like anyway I, again you're right they did a good job they were very efficient about it the concessions were good all that stuff but come on lightsabers that's kind of silly yeah <laughs> I think there were a lot of people there because of the rain because it was Halloween weekend there were a lot of children in costume and you thought ahead and got candy for our booth to give to the kids and people who came by well and to be fair Wizard World did ask us if we wanted to participate but I was like the day that they were like okay you have to respond in two days if you want to do candy and we'll give you some candy oh. and it was I was in the middle of something and I didn't have time to respond mm -hmm. but they gave they didn't give that much anyway because the guy across from us he did it and it was about the same amount that we had anyway so it was mm -hmm. like what like an extra twenty dollars for me no big deal that was fun and and I think also because it was only two days this year instead of three that mm -hmm. more people came on those two days you know, yeah, they took off from work and came. I, I was very surprised. Friday was pretty yeah, Friday busy. Was good because once I think I think it was the people who either the people who had come in the night before or the people that were local to Austin. And Austin's a big place. That's the reason why they have it there is that there are ways you know you can get around. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of celebrities there. Some that I wasn't so excited about, like Mike Tyson and um, yeah, Ricky Williams, who used to play for UT football, and then he, he was really good. And then he got into the the NFL and washed out. <laughs> Although it was fun to watch him as a UT football player. <laughs> it was. <laughs> 
and Jason Isaacs was cool. He's from Harry Potter Harry and from Potter. Event Horizon Event. and from, oh, Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. To me, he's in the same category with like Sean Bean. He's a British actor who's done some pretty decent parts in big giant movies. But then he's also done some TV and he's like a good, he's a really good, like solid actor. Mm -hmm. And if you listened to our last show where I released his panel, he's, he was really fun to listen to. His style was very similar to Patrick Stewart's in that he got up and kind of talked for a while before he took questions and said, hey, you know, I've been doing this a long time and these are the questions I always get. So I'm going to go ahead and answer them now so that we can get to new questions. And he said it in a nice way, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that went on for a little while. That was similar to what Patrick Stewart did. He didn't sit and just like listen to people and answer. He like walked around the stage and he was very like the similar thing to Craig Parker is that these guys are kind of famous for these very stoic sometimes evil roles and one of the things Jason Isaacs is really famous for is his role in the Patriot which could be argued is maybe eviler than Lucius Malfoy because he's really scary exactly the opposite like the minute he came on stage just smiling very like open personality and so it's always interesting to see the evil character guy be like basically your cool uncle <laughs> you know like yeah. somebody you want to hang out with and have a beer with we released that panel on November 8th so go check it out that was our last episode yeah so there was Carol Spinney who plays Big Bird Noah and Casey were really excited to see him and they got their autograph and, and they were real emotional about it that was cool that they got to meet him yeah how long was he on the the roster or on the schedule was that a last minute thing or had he been on for a long time I honestly don't know I just am not and the thing is, is I think that Noah and Casey and I believe Sue as well they are a little more like Jim Henson Fans, where yeah so that that would be a question they may have yeah known about it longer than we did definitely was is big in that world and they were very very excited and I'm so glad because I, I know how good I felt like when I got to meet Craig Parker or Shannon Doherty you know and those were things no, that a lot of people didn't really necessarily yeah they about, weren't. but it was important to me so I think it's cool that some of our friends really got a good good experience mm -hmm. I was very sad that Brent Spiner canceled that was one of my yeah I, I was really looking we forward to that we were gonna record that too I was a little apprehensive you know there was some a degree of relief because you just never know with that guy <laughs> <laughs> well like he was in a panel, panel we did Bar Burton by himself you would know what you were getting into yeah. you kind of see his personality in the world and and you kind of realize the kind of person he is but it could be that he'd wake up one day and be like one kind of person and then like just be in a mood to be like a complete jerk and then maybe be a nice guy the next day and like you wouldn't ever really know <laughs> maybe he's just had a bad day yeah well I don't know that's a bad day I think he's just like I think he's like a troll like it's probably sweet spirited you and I have both heard mm -hmm. stories about him kind of just being mean to people at panels kind of like Shannon Doherty was honestly but because Shannon Doherty kind of is always that way you expect it. You ex When she's a little nice, you're like, great. <laughs> but since he kind of goes back and forth and you're never really sure where he is, I don't know. But anyway, we didn't get to see him anyway, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Marina Bachran was coming too, but she canceled. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit yeah. ahead of time. Brent Spiner canceled like the day Someone up. told me that she's pregnant. She's expecting. So she is. So that, that may have, have had something to do with, you know, how, right. depending and I on how was, far along. That was quite recent. And mm -hmm. I know that I had trouble in my first trimester last time. You know, it was just hard to do certain things. Pregnancy is such a weird thing because some people have a whole pregnancy and it doesn't really bother them that much. Like River was here last last year and she was pregnant mm -hmm. and she was showing a little bit so she was a little bit far along she's she, I think she, was, she was in texas anyway because she's from here oh, that's right so, she's from here but um peter weller was he he was here? supposed to be he, he canceled too and he canceled too okay. and i think he canceled for weather and what about lucas till i don't know uh, i don't x-men first class and days of future past yeah i think he was supposed to be here too but i don't there I were a lot I that saw, dropped i out. thought i saw his name and everything mm -hmm. up Mm -hmm. So, because they had already taken Brent Spiner's stuff down. Yeah. So, we may have, he may and have we, we did have another fun celebrity encounter. Or do you want to talk about I Mike, was going to get to that next. Post? Yes. Uh, no, Let's I was going to get to Tyson first. Oh, Mike so, Tyson. Meh. meh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. The funny thing was I'm not sure why they keep him. I mean. Some people it, do like him, though. 
I guess, but they had a lot of WWE fighters too. And it's just like, for me, I want to be there to see actors who are in sci-fi fantasy or television and movies, you know, authors, not boxers and wrestlers. You know, that just to me is the wrong. Well, it's become a pop about the culture boxing thing. But. Specifically, but I know that the wrestlers, there is a huge demo overlap for wrestling and sci-fi stuff. I guess. For us, that's Why? not Because it's case. on the sci-fi channel? <laughs> well, I know. And I'm just saying, I mean, now I would rather see an MMA fighter, honestly. Mm. Like, I like the MMA fighters. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> anyway, and that's fine to me because like, I think sometimes, like even last year, we complained about the boy band, but sometimes it's good because when you, when you open up a little bit, it does bring more people in and it makes it better kind of for the rest of us, I think. It's a little silly. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Yeah. Tangent. <laughs> That's okay. Bruce Campbell was there. And I have to say, as someone who hasn't seen a lot of his movies or whatever, I have a lot of respect for him. Just to come out and mingle with the fans and look genuinely happy to be there. Two years ago, um, your husband had a photograph taken with him. It was really cool. And so this year, something else happened. Totally this unexpected. Is, is that, honestly, Jim is like a legitimate fan of Bruce Campbell. Right, yeah. Like, really likes him. That's the reason we got the picture with him. Like, he is a legitimate fan of his. And he was there. And it, the way that everything worked out was so perfect because... There was Jim and he decided while he was there, cause he didn't stay at the booth the whole day, but when he was there, he would just take pictures with people and he was taking selfies and I was taking pictures with, with our camera. And there was two guys walking around as Marty and doc. So they stopped with us and he's like, Oh, let's take pictures. So I'm snapping some pictures. I got a beer in one hand. I'm just sort of like snapping, whatever, snapping pictures. And then someone taps me on the shoulder and says, I'll show you how it's done. Like exactly like that. That's all I remember. And then all of a sudden, Bruce Campbell's like in a picture. In the picture. <laughs> and I'm trying to snap and I like put my beer down and I'm trying to like get like a good picture. And I just like kept snapping as much as I could. And I got three pictures. I got one of everyone confused. And then I got one of him flipping everyone the bird. And then I got like one picture right before he like took off. Jim was just so excited. It was he so was cute. over the moon. Yeah, that was. Really fun. <laughs> he was actually standing right next to me, shoulder to shoulder, and I was thinking, "This guy's dressed really well for Comic Con." <laughs> and um, so he then, had like a silk jacket on. Yeah, or something. yeah, and the people with him too. He had a, like an entourage. They were all dressed well too. And the next thing I know, boom, he's in the picture. I'm like, "What? That guy? He was right here." I mean, that it just didn't click because it was out of place for me. You mm -hmm. know, you know when you see someone you know, but it doesn't click who they are right away until. Right. <laughs> so that was a really cool experience that we we had. And he has so. a a show on stars. Yeah, Star he's doing a show called Ash. Ash. Ass. <laughs> that was not on purpose. <laughs> called Ash versus the Evil Dead, and it's based on his uh, the Evil Dead movies that uh, he's famous for. It looks amazing, but I don't get stars and I don't really want to pay for that right now. So we'll probably wait until we can somehow get it on Netflix, you know, yeah. in two years. But because I'll watch it, I just don't really want to buy stars. I know several people bought stars in order to see Outlander. <laughs> yeah, we already paid too much for that stuff. So I'm, I just couldn't make the leap. There's another show with Patrick Stewart on stars that I'd really like to see, but for the same reason. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not buying it for Patrick Stewart, I love you, Bruce Campbell, but I, I'm not buying it for you either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to see Rico again. He came down from Michigan. Yes. Yeah, so Poor guy. He he flew in from Michigan, but the flight was diverted to San Antonio because Austin uh, International was closed. It was, yes. So he had to take a taxi up to Austin and basically ended up driving through the same stuff we did. So Sorry. then um, Mark and Margaret, who frequently are in our Texas Renaissance Festival vidcasts, were there. They are also a guest on a Dragon Con recap that Sue did a few years ago, too, if y'all want to check those out. We'll put all the links in our show notes. Yeah, Mark and Margaret get to do cool things like Dragon Con, and they went to San Diego Comic Con mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. um, which was cool. And yeah, so glad they were able to join yeah. us this year. That, that was 
was awesome. Their costumes were great too. Yes. <laughs> and then um, Duchesne and Jason, some mm-hmm. more of our friends, and Stephanie and Jeff came also. <laughs> yes. They brought some friends that we weren't, we didn't know, but it was cool to have everyone there. On Saturday, we were all dressed as Star Wars characters, and I think we were like the bulk of the cosplay. <laughs> there were some people there in Jedi costumes and um, a Boba Fett and a, and a Wookiee. Mm-hmm. And we, we um, knew Star Wars would be huge this year. Yeah, but yeah. the the num the, it was just funny. I'll never forget like when we ignited our lightsabers for a photo. Like, it mm-hmm. seemed it must have been all about the same time. There was a collective <gasps> yeah. from the crowd and. The <laughs> And especially yeah. whenever there was a there was a really cool Darth Revan that came by in a Kylo Ren, a guy that listens to our show. Shout out to Andre, who listens to our show. He was dressed as uh, Kylo Ren from the new movie, the the new bad guy with the cross guard uh, lightsaber. Mm-hmm. But the uh, Revan guy came over and posed. He wanted a picture with me. So we posed. And it was funny because it got kind of the same reaction because of he was so awesome and cool. And here we are doing this like battle pose. I could not stop smiling ridiculously. This is what I call squeeze face. Whenever I see somebody dressed as a character I really love, like mm-hmm. Remen from Knights of the Old Republic, I was like, yeah. yay! And so I was posing with him and I was like, I told him, I said, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> he said, I know, I'm so glad I'm wearing a mask. So apparently he was grinning like crazy too. So it oh, was good. just, it's so much fun. And then seeing little kids, again, mm-hmm. like I've said in almost all the episodes, one of the funnest things for me is getting to see little kids and they actually have this look on their face like it's real you know mm-hmm. and I remember what it was like being a kid if I had the opportunity to see someone dressed the way we were for the con and seeing that many I would be overwhelmed and excited I probably would have, I would pass out probably <laughs> so I always let them hold the lightsaber after the first shot and you would think that you had given them you know a million dollars the looks on their faces whenever you do that yeah and it's it's so much fun I love it so but that was like one of the highlights for me is like going around with all you guys dressed up. Oh, and uh, the land speeder. Oh, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. We got to have five minutes in a land speeder. We were in the cockpit and it was really kind of cramped getting in that thing, first of all. And we opted to have the windscreen off. So if you're looking at it and saying, it's not complete, there's not a windscreen, we decided glary. to have it off. It was glary and it was probably right in Angela's face. A few pictures with just you and I, and we were being silly and funny in some of them. And then our friend Jen, who was dressed as a stormtrooper in her very awesome female stormtrooper armor, um, was the one who would stop us and ask, you know, about our droids. So, <laughs> and then Stephanie joined us in a, in a picture as Mara Jade. And yep. then everybody oh, yeah, got Yeah, we in. have some really good pictures. That, that was that was awesome. It was a blast. Almost to the same level of fun as our 360 picture that we had done by the Circle Cam people. Oh, yeah. Who also weren't there. Mm. <laughs> I miss them. Those are good pictures. Lots of fun. We had a few people who listened to our shows come by. Um, we got to see Paul. He, he is a listener of Trex and Sci-Fi, and I think he listened to our show, too. And he brought his family by. Then we got to see a lot of new people. So if you're someone new who's just checking out our show, thanks so much for coming by and stopping and, you know, taking a flyer and talking with us for a while. We always like to to rub elbows with the people who are cool enough to download our show every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's nice to get to meet you guys. And I hope we can we can do it again next year. And if you are in the area, you should totally come by and say hello. We have dreams of doing this forever. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can. As long as we can. <laughs> Did you mention the Comic Alternative podcast? Yeah, we had we got interviewed. Derek Royal was the one who interviewed us. Basically, his podcast is all about comics. It's two guys with PhDs talking about comic books. And if you want to check out his show, it's at comicalternative.com. Comics, comics. with an S, comicsalternative.com. He interviewed us and several other creators while he was at the con. And, and that's one of his recent episodes. So go check it out. And then our uh, booth neighbor was Douglas Stearns, who is an, an author who... <laughs> He was so cool. He was a nice neighbor. Mm-hmm. And he joined our Facebook group and followed us on Twitter and we followed him back. And he does a book. He has a book called The Harmonic Wars. You can check him out at harmonicwars.blogspot.com. And you can find him on Twitter and Facebook and Google+. 
We saw a lot of old friends we've seen at every con, like Silent Bob. Silent Bob! So awesome. We need he, to, like, find out, like, who that guy is. I know. He, he recognizes he's, he's, us and gives yeah, us Yeah, he's become part of, like, our comic con thing. And yeah. He's in several yeah. pictures from several years. Like, he's, like, Angela and was posing with him against the wall. He, mm-hmm. Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, and Jay with him. Yeah, he hasn't for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then, um... Last year, he got a light <laughs> from my lightsaber, and then we, yeah. I think Rico did that again this that year. Was, that was cute. He was cool. Was yeah, cool. and then uh, my friend Alyssa from the Austin American Statesman was there this year. This time she was in cosplay. She was dressed as a Nintendo Wii character, like a video and game. And one of the kids from, that was with us totally knew who she was. Knew exactly so who she was. That was something. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I felt bad because I don't have a Nintendo. I'm an Xbox person. We so. can't really, we can't know everything. No. We can only know. <laughs> <laughs> So, yep. yeah, it was great to see all of those people. Mm-hmm. And and also there was a, two guys that we saw last year who were dressed in steampunk costumes. They're podcasters, too. They came by our booth to take pictures with us and say hi. But we were mm-hmm. so busy, I, cu- I couldn't like get away to talk to them. But they took off, and I miss not being able to talk to them. But I hope we see them again next year, too. Mm-hmm. So next year's convention will be three days. Yeah, It is going to be... September, I think it's 23rd, 24th, 25th. It's going to go back to the three-day formula, which is normal for Wizard World. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it is going to be at the end of September. So, September 23rd, 24th, 25th in 2016 in Austin. Yeah. Oh, you know what I forgot to say? What? The cool thing about this was that it fell on Halloween. We not only were um, dressed up for the convention, but anytime we were on the street, hey, look, there's someone in a Halloween costume, you know? But But we went to 6th Street during our trip down there. We did. It was fun hanging out with y'all. And I'll put some clips in in the video of 6th Street. But it's kind of like, it's a lot different than it was when I was in college. Because it was, I remember it being a lot more crowded than it was. But it may have been the rain. There was a lot of people there, don't get me wrong. But there was fewer than I remember in the past. But it's kind of like Mardi Gras. I like to see the muggles in costume. Like, to me... Uh, Halloween's the day where everyone gets to act like we do all the time and 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 be silly and kind of act like, you know, be a fan of something or whatever and mm-hmm. dress up. And so I really enjoy that part of it because I think sometimes the ideas that come from people who aren't like us and thinking about it all the time are, are very inventive. And I think that's cool. Um, we did see some fun things. As we were walking to 6th Street, we saw this giant group of guys all dressed in, the, in those blow up sumo wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> it was very silly. Very. It was silly, a very herd fun. of sumo wrestlers. Yes. And then we saw a flock of robins. We saw a flock of robins, <laughs> and they were hilarious. No Batman, just robins. And uh, what else did we see? Anything else that was? I felt like there was one more like group costume, but I can't remember now. Um, um the bananas. <laughs> the bananas. Yeah. <laughs> just a bunch of people dressed in. The robins costumes. looked cooler to hang out with for some reason. Like they, they, they were looked fun. like a good group of guys. That and was, they would have been fun. What was hilarious was they were in each group there was probably over 20 or 30 people oh yeah they like groups. really did it they did it they well, committed I mean, we did we had like 25 oh, yeah, no. people what's funny is that the robins whenever they would see someone dressed as batman on 6th street yeah. they would run to him ah! and they would all <laughs> hug and start jumping around him and yeah, hugging him like they missed him <laughs> i do have to say though because it totally took me out of it and i know you probably don't want me complaining but there were people on 6th street Oh, With babies and babies. Yeah, babies. that's not a place. And children that they thought that maybe it was a Halloween event, you know, for kids I and families. Know. It's well, not. It's on a strip of bars. So. Bars, like it's all bars. There's not. I mean, we're talking about like ten o'clock at night where you could, or like let's say you just happen to be there for a different reason and your hotel is close by, and maybe you're just walking in between. I totally understand that, you know. So seeing kids there, that's it's not that big of a deal. But there's a bunch of people. A lot of them are drunk. A lot of them are young. A lot of them are stupid. And we went into it kind of knowing that, like, you know, we're all adults and we're just sort of watching this. But take it and you go one block over, you know, taking a child into that and not immediately walking away. I just I don't know. It just like totally took me out of the moment. I I had I don't know. I and especially because I have an infant right now. It was worse. Like I was just looking and they were just standing there again. They weren't walking. They weren't like going from point A to point B. They were standing there like hanging out. And it was super late. 
and late with their cool babies. and wet and yucky. Yes. And some of them were in strollers. So they like planned this, you know, Newborns. I, I just, it, I, yeah, when we went, we went into one bar with like bizarrely expensive drinks for the kind of bar it was. Yeah. And, and we were drinking and right outside was this woman just kind of hanging out, taking selfies, holding her baby. <laughs> and I was just like, my mind was just blown. Her blown. stroller was decked out in lights. Oh, yeah. Like, she, that was all intentional. And I'm not kidding. Like, a younger than my kid. And my kid's, like, eight months old. She she's, was, like, dancing to the music. Oh, my These God. These are the same people that bring babies to rock concerts. And it was loud, too. I mean, so, like, all of these things. And it just drove me crazy. I just could not. I just can't understand that. Like, sometimes just leave your kid at home, you know? Like, sometimes you can't go out when you have a baby. That that happens. <laughs> that's part of the deal we make. Yeah. I mean, that's my little but PSA. Rico was dressed. Rico came with us. So did Sith Jen and you and I. And he was dressed as a vampire. I was dressed. I didn't know what to wear. I just wore my, my, my Renaissance Festival vampire costume. <laughs> the one I wore when we were doing Wheel of Time. And I was Min Farshaw. Mm-hmm. And. And um, uh, so Jen was just a cat, and and what did you wear? Do you? I, I wore my um, dr- uh, my R two G two dress. Yeah, that's right. Yes, and I so, just I wanted to be comfy. Yeah, <laughs> really, we were sightseeing. You know, yeah, we weren't really there watching the crazies. Yeah, we were just to see. <laughs> so. Yeah, our uh, my party days are kind of behind me. Did you ever have party days? I was never a party girl, but I did go to <laughs> parties. Thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. Right. <laughs> your party days. Hilarious. I think your party days are in front of you, Jen. They will happen. <laughs> That's our report. Check out the show notes for our daily reports that we did during con and more photos and videos. Angela will be creating another video full mm-hmm. of more detailed like interviews with the people who came. Kind of more of a documentary style. This is more of a commentary. That's more of a documentary. Go to anomalypodcast.com, search for Comic-Con 2015, and you'll find it. And also any links to like the authors and other podcasts that we talked about, and maybe even some of like trailers from movies that we referenced, like the Evil Dead movies that Bruce Campbell has done. Yeah. So again, if this is the first time you've come across our show, welcome. Thank you for listening. Never miss an episode of our show. Subscribe to us. It's free and you can get a new Anomaly or Anomaly Supplemental, which is our sister show that shares our feed on your podcast listening device every Sunday because we release weekly. And you can find us on iTunes, Zoom, Stitcher, and at AnomalyPodcast.com, A-N-O-M-A-L-Y Podcast.com. Our website is full of archive material, of old episodes that are no longer available in our feed, so check that out. We've been doing this since 2007. We have hundreds of episodes to watch. You just can't stick them all in the feed. It'll only contain about 50 episodes, so um, make sure you... We have lots of geek topics available there. Join our newsletter and our Facebook group to be in the new, and like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, and Goodreads. Do that! Please. (laughs) And also, we want to hear from you. If you were at Austin Comic Con and you saw some cool stuff, write to us, post um, um, your comments in our show notes or on our Facebook wall. We'd love to hear from you. I know we have another episode coming up in a a couple of weeks, but I can't remember what it's going to be. So (laughs) hold on. Let me look it up. Oh, our next one is going to be Revenge of the Sith. Oh, yes. So we have to cover it it Mm -hmm. so we can finish before... Uh, so our, our next episode will be a review of Revenge of the Sith. I think the least horrible of the first three movies. <laughs> the prequels. If you're a fan of the prequel movies, that should not deter you from listening because we always make sure that we talk about the good things and the things we didn't like. So we balance it out. We have a series going on on Star Wars. And uh, Jen, you're always so politically correct about that stuff. I know. People enjoy when we have opinions. That's the whole point. I know, We're but the new, people, the new people may not know. They may not understand. I just want to say. We, we like to pick it apart, and then we like to also say, these are the things we liked. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, we're covering the Revenge of the Sith movie next, and then we have our tickets for opening day for the new movie, The we Force do. Awakens, and we will be reporting on that in December. We will. Yeah, that's coming up pretty quick. I I'm can't really believe excited. it. I'm excited, I too. All I don't know that I've had time to be excited, but I am no. excited. Uh, we did a, a, a review of that, the newest trailer that was released mm-hmm. in the States, and now there's one that came out in, I think, Japan? 
or oh, something. Yes. And there's new footage. So awesome. just a little bit. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But yep. anyway, I think that's <laughs> it for our Comic-Con report. And I think that's everything. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Um, join us again in two weeks. Next week is Anomaly Supplemental. I'm Jen. And I'm Angela. And you've been listening to the Anomaly Podcast, where female and fandom converge.